We're going to go through some conceptual questions involving Coulomb's law. So electric force on a point charge due to other point charges or another point charge since it's only valid for one set of charges at a time. So as usual, go ahead and answer the question on your own first and then watch the solution and reach out if you have questions. So here is the first question. Correct answer here is D. So because both spheres are positively charged, they're going to repel each other. So that rules out C pretty fast because they're not going to attract. A and B cannot be correct because these forces are drawn with different lengths, implying one of the spheres is experiencing a larger force from the other sphere. That violates Newton's third law. Newton's third law tells us for every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. We can also see that by just looking at Coulomb's law. The magnitude of the force on either charge depends on the charge on both spheres and how far apart they are. So if Q1 is the one that feels the force, then Q2 is the one that causes the force. And vice versa. Q2 could be the one that feels it, and Q1 would be the one that causes it. Either way, we need Q1 and Q2 in order to calculate. Let's look at this next question. What do you think here? The correct answer here is C. Not because I don't know, but because there is not enough information. We do know that Q2 is going to repel Q1. Since this question is specifically asking me about Q1, I'm going to draw the vector on Q1 that represents that repulsion. Q1 is going to get pushed away from Q2 because they are like charges. We don't know how big this force is, though, because we don't know the magnitude, meaning we do not know how much charge Q1 and Q2 are. We just know that they will repel. Now, Q3, because it is negative, is going to attract Q1. So ignoring Q2, Q3 is pulling Q1 towards it. We don't know how big this force is either because we don't know how much charge these are. And so by, because we don't know how much charge each one has, technically F2 could be bigger than F1 if there is enough charge on Q3. We don't know though. And so that's why we do not have enough information to answer the question. We know the distance to Q3 between Q3 and Q1 is larger, but without also knowing the charges, we can't relate those two forces together. If it ends up that F1 is bigger than F2, the overall force would point to the left. But it is possible that F2 is bigger than F1. If that's the case, the overall force will point to the right. And so that's why we can't say that the force 
will be specifically left or right. Let's look at this next question. What do you think about this? Same picture, different question. The correct answer here is to the right. This one we do know. So again, since the question is specifically asking me about Q2, I want to draw the forces that just Q2 is experiencing. So Q2 is being repelled by Q1 because they are light charges. So Q1 is pushing Q2 away, which means to the right. Q3 is negative. That means it's going to attract Q2, meaning this force is also to the right. So regardless of how big those forces are individually, when we add them together, we still get an overall force vector that points to the right. And that's why the question is, or sorry, the answer here is A. I don't have this question, but we could certainly ask the net force, the direction of the net force on Q3. If I erase what we have because of Q2 that we talked about, Q3 is being, because it is negative, is attracted to Q1 and it is attracted to Q2. So Q3, its overall force, net force, would be to the left. Okay, well, let's look at another question here. This question comes from our textbook. Now, I'm assuming they're not drawing these vectors to scale. If that is the case, the answer is B, if they're not drawn to scale, At which I'm making that assumption because it's just asking us for the direction. So this top, let me just number these, one, two, and three. The charge down in that bottom corner. I'm just going to draw the point over to the side. I know since both charges are positive that charge one is pushing that bottom left charge downwards. Charge two is also positive. It has more charge but it's still nonetheless going to exert a force that points directly away from it. The third charge down here is also positive, so it will exert a force that points directly away from it as well. So when we add these vectors together, these distances, it looks pretty much they're on corners of a square, when we add these vectors together, the x components are going to add, the y components are going to add, and ultimately just make a longer vector down in the direction of B. Let's look at another one here. Oh, come on. The correct answer here is D. This bottom left charge is positive, 
the charge we're asked about is also positive, which means it's going to be repelled. So I could call this my F1. This other charge, the negative Q, is negative. It's attracting that positive charge. So I could call this F2. <coughs> Because the magnitude of these charges are the same, and they're the same distance r to that charge we're asked about, the force on, the magnitude of F1 and F2 will be the same. The x components are going to add to give us vector d. The y components are going to cancel since F1 points up and F2 points down. Those y components will be the same in this case and will cancel. So vectors coming back to visit us a bit. Okay, one more question. What do you think about this one? Correct answer here is C. They could be equal. They could also not be equal. And that's because they have equal mass. And yes, this is going to take us kind of a rewind back to physics one. If we draw the free body diagram on sphere one, this little ball, it has tension force of gravity, and then this electric force to the left. Otherwise, if there was no electric force, it would just be hanging straight down. Okay, the angle is determined by the electric force and by gravity. Ball two is going to have an electric force to the right, a, ten oops, a tension along the string and mg. Because they have the same mg, they will have the same y component of tension. Now remember, whether they have the same charge or not, the electric force they experience is the same. Newton's third law, for every action there's an equal and opposite reaction. The electric force on sphere one here is caused by sphere or ball two. And vice versa, the electric force on ball two is caused by ball one. If we wanted to calculate that force, we would need to know the charge on both of them and then the distance between them. The electric force is going to equal the x component of tension. So we don't actually have a way to know whether the charges are the same or not, because they're going to ex exert the same electric force on each other. <laughs>